Hello guys. Two days ago I made a video and I was talking about why I left church. But there are some people who um, argue with me and they tell me that we shouldn't uh, avoid going to church. That it's important to keep ourselves surrounded with believers even though people may uh, believe all kinds of doctrines like once saved always saved. And I have been given a calling from God to destroy that doctrine. I have received a dream from God and he showed me that once saved, always saved is like food poisoning. Before that, maybe around one year ago, I was discussing with a brother of mine and this brother of mine was friends with another man who is very known. He is a man that does a lot of missions and believes in once saved, always saved. Um, when I was discussing with this brother of mine, he used to tell me that we shouldn't focus on this thing, that it's more important to preach the gospel, to love each other and to uh, save people, that kind of thing. And I told him that if we don't give the truth to people, we are not saving them because you can well, give them so many good things. You can give them food, you can give them money, you can give them a lot of things. But if you don't give them the truth, then you are not saving them. And I told him, if you give them the doctrine of once saved, always saved, you would not be saving them because they would think that they would be saved while probably they are still living in willful sin and will end up lost even though they think they are saved and they think they are following Jesus. Now, at night, when I was praying about these things, I received a dream, and I saw this man who is a believer and once saved, always saved, who is on missions. I saw that he was driving a bus, and he was calling people to go into that bus. And then I was driving a car next to that bus, and I followed him. And I got next to him and I started to look at the bus and I realized that the bus had no roof. And people were going into that bus and there were a lot of people going in it. But they never realized that there is a roof missing. And I said to myself, how is that bus going to get to its destination while it has no roof? What if it rains? What if there's a storm? How is that bus Gonna survive that storm and gets to its destination. God showed me in that dream that once saved, always saved is like a bus with no roof. You can get people to go on that bus and they will be happy. They will have the label of Christians. They will say that they love Jesus, but in fact, they are not protected. They are not insured. All they have is a bus with no roof. They might get to the destination, but it's not going to be an easy ride. And if there is rain, if there is a storm, they will drown in that bus because this bus is not protected. This is what once saved, always saved is. Now, some people tell me that I'm exaggerating, but I want to show you today from scriptures that we are not supposed to be uh, lovey-dovey with people who believe in that doctrine. We should bring them to the truth. Any person we see, we have a job and a calling to try to speak the truth to them, to tell them about the reality of the gospel, how Jesus calls us to repentance and to get out of that lifestyle of sin, to follow him and endure with him, to obey his words and to do that until the end. So I want to speak to you today from the book of 2 Timothy, second letter of Timothy, chapter 3. This is what it says. Paul in verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days there will be perilous times, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. 
avoid such people. Paul is saying to us to avoid such people. Once saved, always saved believers. Most of them have a form of godliness. They associate with God, with Jesus Christ. They think they are Christians. But if they don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in them to overcome willful sin, to overcome a lifestyle of sin, then they are not Christians. They are not true followers of Jesus. They are just deceived. And when they speak about that doctrine to others, they are deceiving other people with them. Paul says to avoid such people. If we believe that Paul has the Holy Spirit, if we believe that God speaks through Paul, then we would know that God says to us to avoid people like that. This is a response to the people who tell me that we still need to fellowship with believers regardless of that doctrine. Paul says to avoid such people. That is because we need to represent the truth the truth of Jesus Christ tells us that we cannot compromise him for the sake of love, tolerance, and fellowship. The truth comes first before anything. That's why I have a limit on the number of times I speak to people who believe in that. If they're going to come and fellowship with me, I need to bring that subject up. Because if they stay there and we always avoid this subject... Or if we talk about that subject, if we talk about defending one saved, always saved, but they never change. And I am there sitting around, I always speak against it and they still come. Then I am going against what Paul says, which is to avoid such people. We have to avoid people who are distorting the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot compromise on the subject of willful sin because willful sin will lead many people to hell. If you have a home, would you allow somebody to come in your home and start to preach to your children about the fact that they can continue living in sin while being saved? If we accept people in our fellowship and they will start to defend that doctrine and we should remain loving and tolerant with them, then we are accepting that the devil has a playground in that fellowship. So if you have new brothers coming in and listening to these people, they will fall into their traps. It is our responsibility to remove these things out of our fellowship. It is our responsibility to expose the deeds of darkness. You cannot allow a little room for the devil to play in that fellowship. We need to get these things out of our midst because they are an opportunity to the devil to deceive many. So I'm doing this message today to talk to the brothers who tell me that it's okay, we have to be loving no matter what, even with the people who believe in one saved, always saved, even with the people who have a form of godliness, but who deny the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin. They deny that the Holy Spirit will Give them power to change their life, to become holy people, and to walk in the holiness and the righteousness of God. We need to avoid such people. This is what the Holy Scriptures say. If we have a problem with that, then you have a problem with the Holy Scriptures. Not with me. I am only a simple man following what God tells me. And I am accountable to how I treat any brother and sister. I follow the Holy Spirit, and if there is a chance to save any brother from that doctrine, I will take as much time as the Holy Spirit tells me to take to tell that person that they need to change. They shouldn't allow this doctrine to come into their lives and to rob them from their salvation and to cause their soul to end up in damnation. It is my job to do that. But if they are not willing to take it, if they want to argue, then we have to let them go and we have to avoid them until God maybe, by his grace and mercy, brings them to that state of desperation where they truly meet him and understand that it was never allowed to live in sin while claiming to know Jesus, while claiming that they are Christian. I hope this message blesses somebody and helps somebody today and may God bless you.